Well, hello, everybody, and thank you for, for joining in on this. Um, I thought I'm a big fan of uh, Anda uh, uh, and the Coronet, and I thought that we should um, just get together for an hour or so and talk about writing. Uh, I, I, I talk a bit about my experience, and this is my son, uh, Carlo, who's, who's 25, a young writer. Um, and we're all in the same boat and we're all in our own individual boats. Um, and I just thought we could chat together about what the hell we're trying to do when we're sitting in our room in the midst of this kind of terrible collapse and sickness. Um, I think I feel two things. One, uh, uh, an incredible sense of futility of going into a room, what am I going to do in there? What am I going to say? Who am I writing for? How do I incorporate this new world into what I'm doing? And on the other hand, I feel a great sense of urgency of wanting to communicate with other people about what we all think about what's going on. Um, I've got three sons under 25 of which, one example, Carlo is sitting here, two, two of whom are writers. And for young writers, it's very difficult because the world has kind of, as you know, stopped. So the opportunities for somebody like Carla, who wants to work in television, have suddenly stopped just as his career is getting going. And it's quite difficult for him to feel, or indeed for most of us, perhaps, to feel motivated at the moment. Who are we writing for? How are we going to communicate with our future audience? What are we going to say? Are we going to talk about life before the virus, life during the virus, or what we think life might be like after? So all this stuff was going round and round in my head. And I thought, um, well, let's do a workshop. Let's just sit down with some other young writers and let's all um, let's discuss uh, how we might or might not uh, go on from here. So I, how I'd like to kick off is if we could possibly um, just go around the whole group of everyone. You say your name. And just say a little bit about yourself or about what you're writing or how you're not writing or whatever's going on in your life when you're thinking about not writing or writing. Um, and let's uh, have a kind of general discussion about what we can do as, as young and older writers uh, about this mess we're, we're, we're now in. So um, would somebody like to start off? I haven't got everybody on screen at the moment, Andy, so I don't know. I can't see everybody precisely, but if somebody will put up their hand and just say their name and say a bit about what's going on with regard to their writing, uh, I think we could get going. I recently um, did Grey Eyes Write to Play program, um, which has been really cool. Um, and while um, during lockdown, um, Grey Eye have done a project where we um, I've written a short monologue that will be broadcast soon. So writing wise, I've been writing that and developing that um so that's kind of me in lockdown what i've been writing and also working on a uh, play for theater but i am also interested in writing for other mediums as well uh-huh uh-huh um somebody else uh, anita hi yeah same as hi, Anna. Anita. hi um, how's it going over there um, <laughs> Where are you, by the way, if you don't mind me asking? I'm in Bristol. Oh, nice. My boy Carlo went to Bristol, so uh, a part of him is still there, I think. Yeah, well, yeah, I think it's the kind of place you come to and stay. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I've uh, uh, similar to Hannah, I've just done the Grey Eye Write to Play, and I've written a play called Buzzin, and... Um, uh it was going to be workshopped um it's good it was going to be performed at uh, bristol old vic in june oh wow um, um with the uh bristol old vic theater school and um i'm not quite sure what's going to happen now we're going to talk this week about how to make it maybe um with the students filming it or i don't know um i don't um so that's like um, an interesting thing and I've just done a monologue again with Grey Eye um, which I enjoyed it was quite rude and funny I think um, and I've got a radio commission which I need to come up with an idea for and um, yeah I need to come up with an idea for and I'm 
struggling a little bit because the idea of relationships between screens is just um yeah. well it's new <laughs> yeah yeah okay brilliant well you've got a lot going on yeah good for you thanks okay next person please uh, dominique oh, i think you're on mute still Dominique, turn your mic on. Turn the bottom left. Bottom Hello. left. Yeah, yeah, hi. Oh, hi, um, Dominique. Hi, uh, it's nice to meet you. I'm Dominique, I'm from Honduras, and I'm living in Argentina right now, studying communications. I really haven't gotten to the productive part of my uh, quarantine. Uh, mostly just uh, reading and thinking of uh, some ideas I have. I'm starting a... Um, a digital uh, website with uh, about journalism about sorry about migrations journalism and I'm starting to write about to about that too because uh, having lived out of my country for more than 10 years and having lived also in Europe like it's it, it has given me a site of um, where I want to write from and the otherness I want to explore in writing so but I haven't really got to be like maybe if I got into this session it would help to open me some some mind or so open my mind a little bit okay good um somebody else uh, charlene charlene can you hear us i can hi everyone hi. hello uh i'm cc i'm in northeastern new mexico right oh, now wow. incredible so great um, yeah. Yeah. How's it going over there? It's going okay. Uh, it's it's a, no. it's a strange for everyone. Um, I'm um, currently working on a dissertation about uh, virtual performance. So I have a whole lot of work happening, academically speaking, um, no. and then I'm also a project um, that I began a couple of years ago, a research-based uh, historical piece about territorial New Mexico um, right after the Civil War. Mm -hmm. So looking backwards, because it's difficult to write for this current moment. Um, and I'm really pleased to be with all of you today. Good. Thank you. Uh, next person, please. Josh. Uh, it's working. Is. Cool. Sorry, it's a temporary laptop. I managed to break mine. Um, so I, I'm on the invitational group, uh, an invitational group at the Royal Court, and I've got a deadline for the 31st of May. And so I have all the time in the world now to finish this play. But uh, it's about sexual assault and the idea of, you know, I'm sort of locked into a one bedroom flat and it was going really well before, but now I wake up thinking about that and going to sleep thinking about that. It's I, I want to do anything other than write this play. So, yeah. How much have you done? Um, about halfway through, I think. That's pretty good. That's better than no way through. Yeah. Um, are you alone? Um, my girlfriend lives with me. Uh, right. Yeah. Okay, good. Um, somebody else, Andy, can you indicate somebody else, please? Yeah. Is it Chilea? I have to excuse my Hello. No, no, that's okay. You pronounce it pretty well, actually. Um, can everyone hear me? I've got my washing on, so you might hear that. Apologies. Uh, we've all got our washing. We've all got our washing on. Right. <laughs> um, so hi, I've recently right. just become a new mum. So I'm trying to find my creative voice again. And um, yeah, I've, I've found it quite hard. I'm an associate artist at the Mercury Theatre and I've just done an R&D for my new um, play called Boundless. And um, that was the first play um, I wrote and actually um, started to work on after becoming a mum. And it's just kind of juggling mum life and creative life. I guess it's just all up in the air at the moment and then now we're in lockdown so it's like how do I do that without any other help someone looking after my son yeah so, yeah. yeah 
Okay, thank you. Um, next person, please. Kim? Uh, Kim? Hi, Kim. Hi. Um, I'm calling in from Los Angeles, and um, I, uh, I work in uh, television and theater and opera. And oh, wow. uh, I was supposed to have an opera performance uh, this weekend that has been indefinitely canceled. And it's funny, it's sort of st a strange bifurcation because everyone I know in television, it's um, all the development is still moving ahead. So I still have deadlines to hit, I still have work. Is it? Uh, but everyone I know in theater and opera um, is totally unemployed. So on one, sort of in one industry, everything's sort of moving ahead as long as we're not rearranging deck chairs on the Titanic. But, yeah. um, but everyone else that I'm close to, like everything is like totally shut down in terms of live performance. Yeah. But you're still writing, you're working. Yeah, yeah. I'm developing a TV series. So I, I still have like deadlines for that. And um money coming in for that so i'm very fortunate i wanted to ask you do you think can you can is it possible to write in the same way today as we were writing let's say three three months ago the same kind of stories the same characters does it feel the same or does it feel that the world has changed so much that you can't proceed in quite the same way that's my feeling i i feel like i have a hard time writing when I don't think that something is going to be made or when I don't think something's going to be produced. Yeah. And initially it was really difficult to continue working even on the TV series. And I find that I, I have to think of it as a, a period piece now. Yeah, well, it will be, yeah. 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 Um, and if you were to think about writing something new, Where would one set it? One would have to set it either, one would have to make a decision about it being pre-virus or, 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 or during the virus, presumably. Mm -hmm. I mean, I find that a bit odd. Um, it has, you, one has to be a bit precise now, did you think about um, where or when you would set something? I wondered if you had any thoughts about that or anybody else before we, we, we do the last, uh, before the last two people speak. I just was interested in that, wonder if anybody had any thoughts about that. Yeah, I mean, I feel like in a way, everything that I've worked on has been a period piece. Even like my contemporary pieces are like set in very like specific times of like, I don't know, I, I think, you know, also like being American, like the political situation changes so quickly here. Yeah. Yeah. So I think, yeah, during the virus, during like the immediate aftermath of the virus, you know, several years out, like all of those times are going to have very different textures to them anyway. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, yeah. thank you, uh, Andy. The next person, please. Is it? Uh, is, is it Vicky? It's Vicky. Yeah. Okay. Hi, Vicky. Hello there. Yeah. So um, I'm a relatively new writer. I've been working as an actress for the past eight years. I was living in London. Um, obviously, the situation happened, so I'm now in Cambridgeshire with my parents. So all of the ideas and things that I've wanted to write for so long, but been distracted by London life and rushing here there everywhere I'm really getting down to it and writing them out um, I'm currently got two projects that I'm working on one being a theatre play and another an immersive experience but what I'm particularly interested in is intercultural dynamics particularly from the perspective of a supposedly woke millennial generation yeah okay a woke millennial generation do you, do you feel, I mean, you're the future, aren't you? You and my son Carlo and people between uh, who are under at least 30. Um, the world's going to be very different for you when you come out of all this. Do you think writing is going to be, there is going to be theatre, there is going to be television, there are going to be movies, but it's all going to be slightly different, isn't it? Does that worry you when you sit down to write or do you carry on, or carry on writing the same as though it's, we're in a sort of timeless thing? Yeah, it does concern me because it's the fear of the unknown. What's going to happen? What are audiences going to want, if anything? Um, but at the same time, there is a kind of feeling of defiance in me of like, I'm not going to, the theatre's not going to end. The theatre's got to come back with a resurgence. It's got to come back with some new ideas and a shake up somehow. The world is going to be different, isn't it? It's going to be completely different. I can't see that it could be the same, but we don't know how it's going to be different. So we're in a sort of waiting period, it seems to me, at the moment. 
Anyway, thank you, Vicky. Uh, Richard, um, can you can you hear us? Will you would you Hello. would you mind just staying a bit? Yes, of course. Uh, so my name is Richard Bland. Um, I trained as an actor and have worked as an actor for the last uh, three or four years. Uh, recently, I got involved in the Mercury Theatre's uh, Creative Entrepreneurs Program, uh, Mercury Creatives. Um, I've been paired with a wonderful mentor in Hetty Shand, um, and she's helped me to see that the journey I want to go on is a writer-director as opposed to an actor. So I'm very much at the periphery of all this. Um, in terms of my writing, I've written sketches, stand-up material and poetry. Um, but I'm really interested in writing full-length plays. That's what I want to do. And performance or just writing now? Uh, performing as well, but um, I've, I've been uh, encouraged to pick a lane. Um, and for now, my focus is going to be on writing, directing. That's where my heart lies at the moment. And when you say directing, you mean theatre or movies, television? Uh, theatre, uh, predominantly, but uh, definitely wouldn't say no to <laughs> TV or film. Um, but uh, theatre is my focus. Okay, good. Thank you. Um, on the line, uh, Andy, I think it was one other person whose face appeared and then disappeared. Yeah, we've got Jay on, who's just audio at the minute. I don't know if Jay can hear us. Yes, I can. Uh, thank you for having me. Um, I'm just going through ideas. I haven't, haven't been waiting because I've been enjoying the weather and gardening. And by the time I get back in, I'm too not tired to do anything. But I am. There's lots of ideas going on. Good. Um, there are lots of ideas going on. Are people, uh, 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 let, let's talk a bit about whether people are having ideas or whether they feel depressed and futile about the situation. Everybody, uh, surprisingly, sounds rather cheerful. Uh, I'm rather surprised by that, being not cheerful uh, 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 on the whole as a person myself. Um, everyone seems uh, uh, quite cheerful and optimistic about, about what they're doing. Well, is, is that the case? Does anybody, would anyone want to speak to that? I can see um, the man in the middle with the glasses is shaking his head rather... Uh, um, your mic. Are the mics on? I'm just telling him to turn his mic on. Ah. His mic's always slow. Ah. Sorry, I was just saying that I'm definitely not cheerful. <laughs> Are you not cheerful because of your personal circumstances or because of the state of the world? Yeah, I think I, uh, what, uh, this, this state of the world, I, I, I think it's just really hard to um, leave all the noise out when you're looking at your own work and think you know I'm, I'm i'm struggling to see the own relevance in what i've started i was really um passionate about it when i began but now it just seems like why bother why you know why write about anything other than the virus um or something or, or being locked in or whatever so it's just it feels like it's lost its relevancy and that was the thing that was uh keeping me going with with it with my play but i feel that a bit i think what are, we, what are we doing this for? Um, I always feel that. I think I felt that every day of my life since I started writing. You know, when I was a teenager, I still think, what the fuck am I doing? Why do I am I alive? What, et cetera. And then I get on with it. But I feel with this, that there is a kind of devastation of the world as we know it that I've never, I've never seen before. And I have to think about that. And I, I want to address that. It's not as though I could write a story set in 1966. I really want to think about what's going on, but I don't know how to think about it. I wonder if, if, if anybody would like to say anything uh, about that or feels like that or just feels um, uh, uh, that they, they, they would carry on writing the same piece that they were working on before this crisis. I wonder if anybody had any thoughts about that. I feel like there's uh, a bit of a danger in writing um, too much about uh, coronavirus at this point point in time i think it's going to encourage a lot of urgent theater um a lot of theater that's rushed through yeah. um that's not thought through uh, possibly slightly in bad taste as well i think other stories are important particularly at the moment because uh we need those outlets and when this all is lifted we are going to want to watch theater and we're not going to want to watch everything about the the sad time we've just been through we're going to want something more uplifting uh, i think I can see some people nodding and some people shaking their heads. Does, if somebody wants to speak, please go ahead. Uh, you are nodding your head. I think it's uh, the lady there, Vicky. Yeah, I was nodding my head because I agree that um, there will be 
a need for theatre and I think that need um, may be reactionary to things that we've been starved of so for example we might have been starved of feelings of like of hope and being uplifted so there might be a real craving for that or being transported to other worlds obviously we've been denied being able to travel to go to other countries or even go to other parts of Britain so if we have the ability to tell stories that can transport people from this the, the gloomy situation that we're facing I think that's a service that is needed somebody else do we want to be transported from the situation that we're in or do we want to think about it more and is it necessarily gloomy I mean obviously it's very sad and people are suffering, but on the other hand, it's really worth thinking about, I think, don't you? I don't know, what, are, what do other people think? Um, just off the back of that, I think there's a, um, a sense of togetherness, I feel like we've, as a whole world, because everyone's going through the same thing, it's not just a part of the world, one country going through something, it's like all the countries going through something, I feel like, it's imperative that we are transported to another place when when all this is over just so we're not kind of shackled down by like the de I don't know because I feel both inspired and also I feel both depressed at the same time just yeah, because yeah. I'm feeling like can I even go outside the house like and what 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 are the you know I don't know I just feel like I wouldn't want to go and watch something about this time, just. You wouldn't, you wouldn't want to? I Personally, I wouldn't want to, personally. Are there any other thoughts about that? Anybody has any feeling or thoughts about that? Do we want to think about this all the time? Or do we want to think about something else? Or, or what should we I'm be also, doing? Um, I'm also considering what I'm, be sorry, I'm turning off my video because I have low bandwidth apparently. Um, oh. I'm also considering what I'm being drawn to as a reader as well as a writer or, or I mean, yeah. I find that I'm reading more than I'm writing in this moment. Yeah. And I am more interested in, 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 in stories of isolation in previous plague literature and things that directly address the moment that we're currently living in rather than um, something more escapist. And I have to think that that I, I imagine that will actually continue as uh, social distancing measures are gradually lifted, that there will be a continued interest in like addressing what the fuck has just happened. Yeah. Um, as opposed to avoiding, avoiding the reality of our present moment. I was thinking about that with regard to television. Are we going to be watching TV shows that pay no uh, uh, regard to what we've been through, or do we want TV shows that go on and on about it? How do we, I mean, we can't get away from this. We've got to think about this, haven't we? Carla, did you want to say something? Are you thinking about, this is my son, Carla. I, would, I mean, I'm also a writer, so I'm just interested to know what, how, what your processes are. Like, do you write as soon as you wake up in the morning, or do you have to read before, or do you exercise, or do you only do it once a week, or? Do you, are you disciplined to do it every day? Because I'm, you know, I'm the same thing. So I just want to know what you guys are doing. Are you having finding it hard to get down to it? I, I, it's, it's me. It's about, it's about the, the ideas. If I've got a really good idea, or if I know what the next, what, what I'm working up to in a story, then I can usually work for hours in a day. But if I don't, then I would spend the day probably not doing anything at all, or just thinking or reading. So just interested in like so you know some people can just sit at their computers and write for six hours some people can't do that at all so i'm just wondering what you guys do and how you approach it every day does anybody want to did you all hear that do you want to say something about that yeah i would say that i'm finding that the only time that i'm really being productive is like in the middle of the night where everything else is shut down the news isn't there in the background i'm not hearing from my parents some of the negative things that are going on so I can kind of tune myself and really focus on that because I feel like I'm very conflicted between being constantly distracted and also being motivated to write at the same time so it's a back and forth. Mm -hmm. Carla do you want to say anything back to that? I, I mean I, yeah I don't work in the I don't work in the nights I work in I work in the mornings but I, I always imagine working in the in, in the middle of the night would be really nice. Um, I get 
it, the thing is at the beginning of this, I was so distracted. I'd be, you know, I was on my phone for five, I was out five hours all the way through the day reading the news, but now I've like almost distanced myself from it completely. I don't read the news anymore. So, but I'm still find myself really distracted at this time. It's really hard to be productive when you've got nothing to look forward to in the evenings or you know you're going out with your friends for a drink or whatever, just endless days of writing. So it's hard to be productive. Is anyone else? Ricky, I can see the lights on you. Well, you're very productive at night. Um, anybody else want to say anything? Dominique? Um, hi. Yes, I, well, I find that, um, I don't know if writing down uh, ideas that I find good are, is, could be considered productive, but I, that's what I'm mostly doing. And uh, also I think it, uh, my therapy has helped me, my psychoanalysis has helped me to go through this, um, I don't know, uh, connecting ideas, uh, uh, some, uh, something that reminds me to something and then I get to writing, but I don't have the um, discipline to do it, I think. Uh, but I, I usually, I'm probably reading some, sometimes I'm reading a book and I have to close it because I think that it relates to something that I went through and I have to write something about it. And, yeah. But I don't have a discipline about it. I'm just trying to look uh, look for it right now. I mostly write about journalism. I mostly write from. It's different, I think. Paula, what were you going to say? No, I mean, she, with with the psychoanalysis, is a good point. It's writing's about free associating, isn't it? And so it's coming up with ideas and reading and then going back and writing more ideas and trying to build some kind of structure out of the ideas. I think that's what the process is. So that sounds, that sounds good. I've always used that method when I'm, when I'm writing. I get up in the morning and I go to my desk over, over there across the room and I just sit there and I free associate and I write down any crap that comes into my head about a dream I had or somebody I saw or something somebody said. And eventually all these bits and pieces, you know, sometimes they start to, they start to hang together and then something begins to emerge. But I'm not writing at the moment and I find it almost impossible to write at the moment because I don't know whether I'm supposed to be writing about the coronavirus or, or I'm supposed to be writing about something that happened in the 1970s. So I can't, I don't know where I am anymore because the world has sort of been smashed. Um, and it seems to me that this is, you know, I'm obviously, my, I'm in my mid-60s, and this is the most, uh, this is certainly the strangest thing that's ever happened in, 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 in my lifetime, and almost impossible to comprehend in terms of anything that's happened before, certainly in, 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 in my country, and certainly, in, as far as I know, in the West. So I, do, I just don't know how to start, I don't know where to, where to start thinking about writing. Uh, one of the things that's really interested me, though, is the fact that uh, the, the, the that the virus would make people afraid of each other in new ways. People are frightening enough as it is, as far as I can see, but they're even more frightening now, particularly the way they walk around you when you, when you walk on the street, as though you, you, know, you, you may kill them, you may infect them, which in fact you may do. And I, I wonder whether people's personal relationships have changed and whether that will seep into people's writing and whether anybody has any thought about that. Yeah. Anita? Well, I was saying to someone um, last week that actually I have thoughts like that all the time. And it's just, uh, but like, it's kind of like my inside voice and I'm not supposed to say those sort of things. Like I'm quite relieved that people have to keep a distance from me. And like, I'm quite like relieved that um, other people are experiencing anxiety to the levels that they're ex ex experiencing. And it's becoming like a normal conversation rather than, because I like, <clears throat> do you understand what I mean? Like I experience feeling anxious and I experience quite extreme feelings and it's something that's not necessarily accepted and talked about, but like in this current situation, people are talking about that. So it's like, it's a bit more of an equalizer. So I'm interested in how it's becoming, no it's sort of more normal to talk about the intensity of relationships in this time. I think that's a really interesting thing to say. I think we should take it for granted that everybody else is anxious all the time. And they're probably more anxious than we are. You know, you tend to forget that. And, you know, I'm in an anxious state and I think everybody, nobody else is in an anxious state. It's just me. They're all calm and they're perfect and they're happy. In fact, 
once I begin to realize that they are twice as anxious as I probably am, then it, that really calms me down. And I feel that, you know, we're all living in the same world with regard to that. Um, anybody have any thoughts about, about that? Um, by which I mean, it's, it's going to change our personal relationships, the people we can see, how often we can see them, what sort of relationships we have with them and, and, and so on. I wondered if anybody had any thoughts about that. In certainly in terms of writing. Yeah, I think on the back of what you've just said, um, it has possibly made people feel braver in being a bit more vulnerable, not having to put on this facade all the time, not having to look a certain way, act a certain way, and discuss these things. And particularly in, say, the world of celebrity, people that may previously have been put on a pedestal or on a platform, those things are being questioned more now. And the people that were kind of, uh, unsung heroes that that we there's more focus being placed upon those and we're starting to see some of the cracks that were maybe kept hidden before um, become more visible um, and I think as a result people are becoming a bit braver in terms of highlighting some of these things and talking about their own individual um, experiences. I think that's a very good point I think that the the art when we come out of this I think the world will look different and I think our values will be different my feeling is very strong about that I don't think that we, we we're going to want or value the same things that we liked before it's in my view it seemed to me that we got very caught up with celebrity culture with consumerism with money uh, and with the values of so-called hyper capitalism that we disappeared into for a while and my feeling is that that we will want other values after that but I wonder what if anybody else has any thoughts about that or whether I'm just whether I'm just dreaming. Anybody else? And if Kristen, um, who's listening in, who's an actor, has uh, just written, uh, as an actor and advisor, I find myself wanting to perform and create, not necessarily around COVID, but around these incredible intense emotions we are being forced to confront. Isolation, fear, the new urgency of needing to let your special people know they are loved. I think we'll want content that deals with this, even if it isn't expressly about COVID. I think that's a very interesting thing to say. I think it's an interesting thing to say because although we might not want to write specifically about the disease, we're going to have to write as writers about the way people's relationships have changed, their relationship with themselves, their relationship with other people. And I think, I think that's going to be, that, that's the starting point for, for, for new work. Does anybody want to say anything about that? Carlo, do you feel anything about that? The people's relationships have changed, the relationship with, their, with themselves and their values? Uh, probably quite probably too soon to say i can uh, probably uh, if this if we have another protracted winter and then have and a uh, vaccine was only found in 12 months time then everything's going to be different but i think now i i think no i don't think i don't think so i don't think we would have radically changed so much now um and i think it's going to be i think it's going to be a long time before we find out what stories are really interesting from this period because really there is just one punchline or at least one you know so-called inciting incident which is that you know certain people are stuck together that's but that's just almost you know that's that's a universal story trope um it's wondering how we're gonna how that's gonna how that's gonna manifest itself now um i don't know any thoughts dominique i can see you nodding rather enthusiastically there have you got any thoughts about this Uh, yes, I've actually um, read a lot of um, initial ideas about something to write during quarantine or situations during quarantine. And it got me thinking that uh, all, all of this, I wanted to write about migrations and my own experience and the otherness. Like, how do I write about that and ignore this actual context when we're all sort of experiencing this sort of otherness? Or I think some more than... Uh, I don't know if otherness is the appropriate term in Spanish is another one. Uh, but I mean, to experience being uh, the different one in a, in a context when, where we're all like distancing from each other. And I, I don't know, I just thought about how to write from there. And, and, even, and if it's important to keep writing about uh, the things we thought were important before, um, like this about migrations, how to write about migrations when most of the countries are closing down or closing their frontiers. Um, yeah. yeah. If you're going to write about migrations, you're going to write about migrations before the 
the epidemic or you're gonna uh, you're writing about it uh, at the present uh, I was thinking more um, ten years ago to now uh, mostly from my experience living living here in Argentina I I wanted to write uh, from there but but I think this context like uh, brings up a whole are important for for what what it means to be a migrant right now in this context so I'm like rethinking a lot of things and I think that's why I haven't gotten to be um, a productive if one can say it that way um, just, um, like meddling a lot of ideas in my head about this and, and how it affects migration and the experience um, the migration experience yeah most of you uh, uh, work in theater most of you work in um uh, cinema and television. Uh, uh, very few of you are, uh, am I right about this? Very few of you are writing novels or, or, or uh, short stories. Is, is that right? Um, because it seems to me that the theatre and certainly the cinema and certainly television is going to be very, very different when we come out of all this. Um, and my son Carlo is working in television. I wonder how, how, how you think you can carry on and what the industry is going to be going to going to be like in a, in in a, in a year's time after we've been through all this are we going to be able to think about anything else is everything going to have to be about uh, this this uh, 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 world sickness or whether we can just carry on thinking about i don't know love sex passion relationships ourselves other people families parents and so on um any I, thoughts i, I realized that this at the moment is a global issue and is for everyone. <clears throat> but um, at the same time, we've had things that have affected everyone before and writing in the arts has carried on and read some amazing, incredible things. Uh, yeah. Look at the kind of rise in the depression out of World War II. Um, things more recent than that, but every decade has its, has its coronavirus to some extent or another. I don't think it's necessarily something to be feared about what's, what's going to come when this is all over. I think it's more something to be one thing to be excited about is what could come out of this that's new i mean i for one think that things are long overdue a shake up <laughs> in terms of in artistic and writing circles well that's a good thought isn't it that's rather cheering after all yeah we think of the first world war indeed of the second world war and other you know terrible world catastrophes um we also have to think of uh, uh, the good writing, good theatre, movies that, 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 that do come out of these earth-shaking experiences. Uh, the fact that artists want to write about them uh, and the fact that audiences need to, we need to link together in order to, to think about these experiences we've gone through. So you might say that something, despite the sadness and awfulness, that something productive is, will probably come out of all this. So that would be at least a reason for, let's say, a guarded, a, a, a guarded optimism. Is that is that right? I mean, I personally, I feel really depressed, really fucking depressed about what's gone on because, for me, the world as I knew it um, has just been uh, devastated. It's all gone. It's like it's flattened. It doesn't mean that it's not going to come back in some other form, but it's gone, and that to me seems really, really tragic. Whereas you are all young, you all seem really uh, quite, 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 quite cheerful and optimistic about the future. So, how is that? I've, 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 well, I, you're pretty being pretty cynical. I think there'll probably be an affirmation of all the things that we really liked doing before the coronavirus afterwards, right? Weren't right there? Do you? Well, yeah. Why? Well, I mean, of course, there will there'll be a boom in 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 everything that we want to, we we've missed doing for so long. In pleasure. Yeah, Do you? there'll be a boom in pleasure. Do you? Yeah. Wow. Well, I feel. I mean, I feel very pessimistic about the future of live performance in the United States. Because we don't, I mean, we have so little government support for our arts anyway. Yeah. And there are these little venues. Like, I, I write plays that don't go into the big venues. I, I write plays that have been in little venues. And it's really difficult to see how any of those venues are going to survive even another month or two of shutdown. Because for us, our margins are just so narrow. And we're also, yeah. um, what we're being told in the U.S. is that, oh, well, when there's, a, when there's a vaccine, this will all be over. But scientifically speaking, there's no reason that there would ever be a vaccine. There may never be a vaccine. And I have close friends who work um, in hospitals who say that, like, 
from a public health perspective, we should be prepared to, that we may have to go sort of in and out of lockdown strategically for the next few years, next maybe next six years even. And um, the implications of that for like the way that our theater industry works are really, um, really terrifying to think about. And then I also work in classical music, which requires a lot of, you know, a lot of people to get together in close quarters and play instruments or sing. And it's, I mean, it's hard to imagine like bringing together like a symphony yeah. and an audience of 2000 people or so to watch a symphony. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I don't, I don't know what's going to happen for us. Um, that's a dark view. I wonder the, the, whether, uh, out of this, people begin to think of new ways of collaborating, new ways of making theatre, new ways of making television. Um, just as you know, we're 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 doing a workshop here, and I never thought I'd be doing a workshop in my in in my study in my house. Um, and this is quite interesting, and it, and it's working. We found a solution, but it's not the same, is it? I mean, if this was a real workshop, we would all meet afterwards. We would have a drink. We'd sit around. Would exchange phone numbers and some some other stuff would, would come out of that sociability. We're going to just do this formal thing now and then we're going to shut down. But it seems to me that, that it's sociability, Carla, that, that I really miss. Um, just having a drink with somebody and having pointless conversations with, with people. I, I wonder if anybody's got any thoughts about that, that we can't be frivolous in the same way. Obviously, we're on the internet now and we're all talking quite formally. Um, it's quite difficult to be frivolous, to, to, to have pleasure to, with other people in the same way we, we did before. What's your view? Anybody, any thoughts about that? I feel like there's a million things that we could speculate about what's going to happen after all this. The, the mm. fact of the matter is we just don't know. And you can be optimistic or pessimistic, and sometimes it can't feel like a choice, but I think optimism is a necessary choice because it's the only one that serves us at the moment. Uh, nothing productive comes out of negativity and pessimism. Um, but anything can come out of optimism. And whilst we don't know, I, I personally would rather go along with the one that could produce something. And I agree about the sociability side, but I mean, we're never, we're social beings. I don't believe that we're ever, it's ever going to come to a point where we, we lose that altogether. Uh, I, I mm. speak with my friends regularly on video chats each day yeah. and it's not quite the same. No but it's a semblance of what was and there's nothing to say that that won't come back or it will, but um, positivity is yeah, my, my own preference. I'm positive yeah. like you. Sorry, Vicky, go on, you go. No, I was just going to add to that. Um, on the flip side of, of course, these meetings don't compare to what they would be like in person, but I'm making so many more connections with people in further away places than I would have otherwise. Yeah. So our constraints are actually opening up new doors, particularly if you are somebody that is quite new, there's suddenly a huge amount of online resources and access to information that you wouldn't otherwise have had. So for some people, there may be opportunities. Yeah. Somebody else? Any thoughts? I mean, I really want to read what people are writing about this. Uh, I'm, a, I'm, I'm a, a writing teacher, and obviously my students haven't started uh, writing about this stuff yet, so they're, they're writing, as it were, pre-virus. I really want to know what people are thinking. I really want to know what people have been doing. I really want to know what it's been like for people who have been locked up for six weeks with their mother-in-law. You know, there's going to be a lot of comedy. There's going to be a lot of weird, weird stuff coming out of all this. I think, there's, you know, I can't wait to, to, to start hearing those those stories, and I don't think they're going to be similar. I think they're going to be really unique. Each one's going to be different. Everybody's had a different experience. So I'm really looking forward to, to, to reading and hearing about this. I don't think it's a, a dull subject at all. I think some amazing stuff's going to, going to come out of this period. And, and, well, I'm not going to write it. You are. So uh, uh, um, does anybody have any thoughts about that? I, I, I agree with uh, uh, Richard. I feel quite positive at the moment about the fact that despite the, the fact the world has been ruined and devastated i'm i'm rather i'm rather cheerful about people's creativity at the moment any, any thoughts about that i ask what they're watching or reading and what inspires them sorry what ask them what they're watching and reading what, is, what inspires them at the moment uh, my son carlo just said to me that i he thought i should should ask you before we finish 
if there's anything that you're reading or watching or, 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 or learning at the moment that you find particularly inspiring with, 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 uh, that's relevant to what we're going through. Um, any or thoughts not. about that or not? Um, this one's going to sound really weird, but I think I've delved into social media way more now than I ever was. So I'm finding myself watching um, like Instagram lives, like that's actually a thing. Like people are making radio stations now on Instagram. Um, there's like, I don't know whether you've seen, um, sometimes I think his name is Tory Lanes, and his work is like quite controversial because people are going on, on these lives and just doing anything. So that's what I found myself watching. And I feel like um, it's, it's just weird to see kind of what, no contact with the outside world does to, to mm. people. And that's inspiring and interesting for you, yeah. Um, yeah. Anybody else? Hannah, have you got any thoughts? You haven't said anything for a while. Do you want to say anything or not? Um, I don't think I'm watching necessarily that much stuff that's necessarily like, I'm not seeking out stuff that's relevant to now. I'm watching... I'm interesting, I'm watching quite a lot of theatre because a lot of theatres are putting their stuff on YouTube, like the National oh, Theatre. Wow. Really? Wow. Um, other theatres, Pentabus Theatre are, um, I'm trying to think, Hampstead, like loads of theatres are putting. So I've been watching, oh, and Royal Court have put a play on. So I've been watching theatre, but also just watching, sometimes I just want to be distracted. So watching comedy or sci-fi or stuff like that is quite nice as well. Yeah. Anybody else um, who hasn't spoken? Anita, let's, let's do one last go round and then um, say cheerio. So I can see that Anita wants to say something. Anita? Yeah, um, I've just solidly watched the last four um, seasons of Skins. That's what I've done. Good. good. Yeah, it, was, it, it is good. Because um, the things that I'm writing at the moment are about um, the intensity of relationships and teenagers. And I'm a single parent with two teenagers. So it's kind of like um, uh, that's what I'm living. And it's kind of, and I'm living with a 15 year old who's just had school cancelled and their exams cancelled, and a 19 year old who's just like got no university and it's just like everything stopped for them and their emotions are like completely uh, energy of that is like banging yeah. around the walls it's quite loud and um there's musicals being sung at two o'clock in the morning and screaming so watching skins is like quite a relief <laughs> and it's funny and yeah. writing's brilliant so i like it good um josh do you want to say something um before we finish any thoughts about anything that's interesting you or watching or is inspiring you or making you write or not? Josh, you haven't turned your mic on. Yeah, he has, yeah. Turned it on, it's just slow. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, I've just been going to comfort food, like uh, Bond movies and the Komodo Mo film podcast and books that I've read before. Um, I'm not seeking out much new stuff, but maybe that's good. Maybe that's okay. Um, yeah. That's what I'm doing. Yeah. Kim, do you want to say anything before we go? Any thoughts, any recommendations, anything that might cheer us up? Not from Kim. Well, they have Trump over there, so uh, it's going to be less cheerful over Your there. Your mic. Mike, Kim, you're not. Oh, there we go. Um, yeah, well, we, uh, we do have Trump over here, and if, um, I guess if thoughts and prayers worked, he'd have coronavirus by now, <laughs> but unfortunately, he <laughs> doesn't. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's, uh, I mean, I think the most optimistic um, hope for us is that this is going to really like viscerally show Americans just how interconnected we all are and how much we uh, need to band together and um, help each other to survive because up until this yeah. point we've been an extremely ind individualistic society. Yeah. Um, yeah, and it's it's hard to think of life without our theaters or life without our institutions. Um, I mean, I have friends who work at the Kennedy Center, which is like our equivalent of the National Theater. Um, and the Kennedy Center gets no money from the government whatsoever, except to maintain the building. And so yeah. for them, yeah. um, they survive on ticket sales and they've lost $15 million just from having to like cancel the rest of their season. Yeah. So mm -hmm. it's, 
it's definitely a time when, um, for better or worse, the slate has been wiped clean in so many ways. And hopefully something um, happens that's better than what we had before. And fortunately, as Americans, we were not setting a high bar before that. So. Okay. Well, thank you. Uh, Vicky, anything before we go? Any, any, a shout out for anything you're, any, any thoughts you have or anything you're watching or inspires you or makes you think? I'm very much inspired by um, Daisy May Cooper, who created the TV series This Country, which is on BBC. Um, she acts in it and she also wrote it herself, but hearing about how that came to be is inspiring for me in the context of the situation that we're in. Um, that she was an out of work actress. She went back to her home area in the Cotswolds where there was nothing to do, but they made, she made the best out of that and really kind of captured and made a whole TV series about the comic mundanities of that village life. So um, the idea of making the best out of what you've got and what is right in front of you and looking at it again with fresh eyes is something that is reassuring to me. Okay, that's a great thing to say. Um, Charlene, do you want to say something before we go? Any, anything that inspiring you or interesting you at the moment? Sure. Um, I can second Josh and that I'm doing a lot of rereading, um, as opposed to seeking out new material, but I, I reread, uh, Sontag's Illness as Metaphor yesterday, oh, yeah. and I would yeah. really recommend it to you guys. Yeah. It's really interesting yeah. to think about that again. I think that's a I think that's a really interesting uh, uh, book to look at at the moment because she's thinking about uh, the the language we we might use to describe this so called sickness. Uh, people talk about uh, as a sickness. People talk about it as a war. I think we should look as as writers as artists. We should think very carefully about the language that we use about this. How you know we are describers, uh, and the world has to be redescribed. It's our, our our, our job is to is to as it were put color in 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 the bleakness of what's going on and I, I i think we should be very attentive to the language that we use about this and think about how we how we can describe this and find ways that seem uh evocative and inspiring and uh, all this talk about battles and wars and so on the, 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 these metaphors are really not particularly helpful or, or illuminating so i think I think the, the point you make about Susan Sontag is a, is a really important one because the language, uh, as language people, uh, is really essential to for us to describe this in, in as a new thing in new ways. Um, Richard, do you want to say something before we before we kick off? Uh, yeah, sure. Um, so I've been watching a lot of um, theatre online as well. Uh, I've also been going back and reading uh, the old classics, um, some uh, Tennessee William Martha Miller. Uh, Ibsen and stuff just to try and get myself back in um, what's what that kind of storytelling is because uh, I love that um, but also I've been doing a lot of research into uh, the hero's journey and the writer's journey with Christopher Vogler oh, yeah. um, trying to create some parallels as to what's going on with us at the moment um, this is our inciting incident what's gonna what's gonna happen uh, that's where I'm at okay uh, my son Carlo do you want to say something before we wrap up um, in terms of, I'm, I'm reading a lot of American literature at the moment, um, and I'm, and I'm watching, and I'm watching like everybody else, a lot of Netflix and I'm watching a lot of classics, but I would advise if anyone's, there's Edgar Wright's top thousand films online, search that, that's a really good list of films to watch. Um, and I've just been watching the Michael Jordan documentary on Netflix, which is amazing. Um, and if okay. just a wrap up. There's just a few people indicated when they uh, signed up that they had a few specific questions uh, to ask. So I just wanted to make sure uh, we had the opportunity to hear any of those just for a minute now, if that's possible. Yeah, please go, go ahead. But will, will you read them or will they read them? Uh, if, I think if individuals could, uh, if they do have anything they want to bring up more widely. Okay. See you now. Okay, go. Who's got the questions? Andy? Everyone put one in, it's just in case then um, we haven't covered anything. It's just to, just to give a little opportunity now, just because when they signed up, there was a few, um, few people indicated they had something to ask. Um, what I was thinking of doing before we, we wrapped up, I was thinking it might be nice to carry on with this 
uh, coronet series. Um, and if people are up for it, we could do um, like five to 10 minute readings. So each person could, 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 could read something, it's got 10 minutes, they could read something out, out they've written, or they could act something out that they've written, or they could act something out with a, with a person who shares their house, household or somebody who's online with them in some other way. So everybody's got 10 minutes in which they could produce uh, for other people a, a bit of their work that they're working on. So uh, despite the futility and emptiness of our long days, the, 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 if, we, if we could start to, to think about whether we could do that, I mean, I would be happy to, to, to write something uh, 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 and, and, to, and to read it out and to hear other people think and talk about it and to, and to hear other people's work. So I think at the Coronet, I think we're going to start thinking about do, uh, doing some kind of, of a series where people could do, say, a 10 minute slot of, of something if, if you'd all be up for it. So um, let's think about that and whether you'd be interested in that or whether any of you have any ideas of other things that we could do during during this period in order to carry on uh, communicating. It seems to me that people are starting to come out of the lockdown a bit now, but I think it's gonna go on probably for another month or so at least, uh, certainly in the UK. So uh, maybe there's other other stuff we could start, start to think about doing. So if you've got any thoughts um, and ideas, please send them to the coroner and we'll we'll set up a series uh, in which people can, can, can read and share their share their work if any of you are up for it in order to get around this terrible sense of futility and they're not being a, an audience and so on um anybody like to say anything finally before we wrap up josh i can see that you have words in your mouth what's your time <laughs> no, no. not on sorry yeah, no, no. Um, it'd be great to do the readings. Be yeah, nice. yeah. Okay, we'll we'll we'll, we'll organise something like that. Um, anybody want to say anything before we before we finish? Any anyone bursting with any thoughts? Dominique, you look as though you're bursting with something over there. No, actually, I recently read um, a, a note you wrote about the two Keiths, and I started reading uh, the book on Keith, um, uh, but uh, the book uh, Keith Johnston wrote. Oh, and he was uh, writing, yes, he was writing something about um, how, no, I think it was a video I saw, I don't remember, but he was writing about how, uh, how one is afraid of uh, the other person, how the other person looks at you. And yeah. I was just thinking how we just don't, how we actually are missing that right now from, from the context, like the, or yeah. how, it, how it has evolved, you know, the look of the other and how it, it affects how we act. And I, don't yeah. know, I just thought about yeah. it. Okay, well, thank you, everybody. Big love to everybody. See ya. See you soon. Bye-bye.